Hi creators, the Fully Sampler is a new addition to DaVinci Resolve 16 in both the free version and the studio version. It's a nice free plugin addition to Resolve and can be accessed from the Fairlight page or the edit page. I'll show you how to load samples, set up the plugin, customize and save settings in the Fully Sampler right now. Let's go. So here's the things I'm gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna show you how to access the Fully Sampler load a sample, load multiple samples, customize sample settings. I'm gonna show you how to customize the sampler keyboard with Foley sounds and save the settings for future use. And I'll also show how to sync the Foley audio to focus in on parts of the video. Okay, to get started with the Foley sampler, you're gonna need some video in your timeline. You can access the Foley sampler from three locations in DaVinci Resolve. You can do it from the actual editing page. To get to that, you go to the effects library, make sure that's selected. Go down to the toolbox and select audio effects and Fairlight effects. You can see the Foley sampler is right here. And you can just drag and drop that on top of your audio and you'll get the sampler built right in there. You can also do it from the actual cut page. Make sure you have the effects selected. Go to audio, scroll down, and you'll find the Foley sampler. And so we're gonna drop that right on to our audio clip. And we'll have the Foley sampler here, or you go the traditional route and set it up in Fairlight. In this case, we can set it up right in the effects on the actual track. And you can see I already have a Foley here because I dragged it on with the editing page. Let me go ahead and delete that out. Delete that instrument there. And I have no input now. We already have some audio here with this track. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new track. And I'm gonna add in the Foley sampler into audio track two. And we're gonna go under the Fairlight FX. Jump over here to this menu and select Foley sampler. Go ahead and add that in and we get the Foley sampler there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the settings on this Foley sampler. To load a sample, we're gonna go up here and click the upper right corner, the dot, 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 and we're gonna add a sample. And I'm gonna go in here and find some of my samples here. So I have some of my Video Copilot samples in here, and I have some of my own samples in here. So I'm just gonna grab this, uh, this is a bass, a short note here. You can see that adds into my sampler there. Okay, some parts of the sampler itself, there are four different sections here, and the first is mapping, and we can set the key range up here at the top, and so you can see that the sample is showing across the entire set of keys. We can set the low range, high range, and the center as well, and this is on manual. There's an auto and an auto plus tune mode as well. And by default, the sample is set on the C2 value for the original untouched sample. We can set the tuning and go down an octave and go down several octaves. It's gonna really slow things down, obviously, as well. You can also set semitones here. We can do some affine adjustment and track adjustments as well. And we can do layering here as well. This is the master level on the, the right side here. So you can see as I play this note, we're getting a, we're kind of clipping there. And so I'm gonna wanna reduce that down a bit. And we'll have a chance to set this audio level per sample as well, because we can add multiple samples onto this surface here. And if you do have a VST instrument set up, a MIDI instrument keyboard, which I don't right now, you can select it right here and you can play it on that as well. Or you can use these buttons here at the bottom. The next section is the actual sample. So you can see here, uh, there, there's three modes, full, active, and loop. And we can set the actual sample that we wanna use. So there's some blank space here. So typically we're gonna clip that out and we can set the start and endpoints for this sample. And so now we're just getting the entire sample in there. And we can do the same thing for our looping. There is a, a no loop, one shot, or loop mode. I'm not gonna cover that today. And so let's go to the level. And this gives us our waveform so we can actually see what's going on there. And so we can set the per sample level right here. It's set to maximum right now. And 
we can set the pan. So if we want to send it to the left or right only channel. We can set that down to zero. This is the velocity sensitivity that will work with your MIDI keyboard as well. The sampler does have an ADSR envelope. Uh, and so it actually adds the hold to it as well. So we have an ADSHR envelope, which is nice. So the A is the attack, and that's how fast the sample is going to reach its peak volume. And so if we delay this, it's going to have a delay getting to that peak. And what I'll do is I'll slow this down. Let me go back. Slow this down to a 2. That way you can see this a little bit better. And so when I set that attack onto a delayed attack, you can see I have that curved front of that waveform. And when I turn it back to zero, we get that sharp push up right to the peak. And so the hold, uh, basically it sets the time that the sample will be held at the sustain level. So It's going to just keep this waveform flat up here at the sustain. And the decay is going to actually, um, once we hit the sustain level, it's going to be how fast it drops down. So, and this is the sustain here, and this is the volume sustained after the initial peak. It's defaulted at zero, and zero is the highest we can go. So we can set that to a lower level if we'd like. And you can see that's just kind of doing, it's lowering the actual level down as well. And then we have the release, and this is how quick the sound volume is going to drop to zero after the key is pressed. So um, right now it's set on zero. If we set it on four seconds, then I can just tap on the keys. It's going to play my full waveform because my sample is less than four seconds. If I set it to zero, you can see that I don't get that. It's like holding down the, um, the sustain pedal on a piano. We can just force that in with this setting right here. So let's go over to the filter section, and we have a couple of settings here. Uh, we have a nice uh, low-pass filter here. You can see it's 500 to 20K. And then we also have a Q value. This is the resonance of the sample itself. Basically, it's going to set a range of the sample um, or a little portion of the sample, and it's going to feed that audio back into the input. And so that can give you some different effects. It's um, With this sample, you're not going to get a lot of result. And then we have our filter curve here as well. As we were going through that sample, playing that, you can see our filter effects are getting applied right here. We can see what that's doing as well. So you can play around with those. And a couple of other things that are interesting here, we can set our input and our output of our video. So say we're focusing on a, a, a little bit of a range of our video and it's over a little bit here. And so we wanna say we wanna set our initial point. And so I'll set my end point here and I'm gonna hit the space bar just to scrub forward a little bit here. Stop there, and I want to set my output there. And now I can set this on loop, and it's just going to loop through that small portion of the video. I can set my fully right on that, and I can loop through it and practice that, which is really nice. Okay, before I move on, I want to set the bass note. I want to move this to the left side of our keyboard here, just on those notes. So I have it where I want it. I'm going to add in another sample. This one is going to be this bass shot here. And I want to move this one over to, on this key range. I'm going to move that octave level down one, actually two. Okay. And then I want to, and I want to lower that sample volume down just a little bit. All right, let's add another sample in. This one is going to be a distortion wave. 
and you can see I had that set on auto and so it automatically centered these two. So if you keep this on manual, then you won't have that happen, but I'll go ahead and use this anyway. So I have this distortion wave and I'm gonna set the keys. I'm, I'm fine actually with this. I wanna set the active. Okay, so now when I'm using these samples, uh, first of all, if I have the keyboard set the way that I want it, I can go in here and hit plus and then save this preset. I'm just going to call this test, hit okay. And so now that one is available for me in my pull down here from now on. I can have that set up ready for me to go. I can also look at my preset manager here. It's going to show me that, that under the fully sampler, I have this available and I can delete it out. I can manage it from this location here as well. And this also gives you access to all your other plugin presets. From any of the Fairlight plugins, you can manage those right in this actual preset manager, which is really nice. So to go in and clear the sample, you just hit delete sample here. Okay, and then if we wanna clear all the samples, we can go in here and hit clear all. Uh, you can also rename samples here. We can split a sample. All right, to select a sample, you just need to click on the bar here. And so we can go back and make changes to any sample that we've placed in here. So you can see up here, my test preset has an asterisk. That means I made changes and if I wanna update that, it's gonna ask me if I wanna update it or create a different preset. So I can go ahead and just update that. Okay, so there's some different recording modes as we go through here. We can do a safe mode, which is just where you can play around. And also you can do a record mode and you can do a step mode. And step mode basically is if you're hitting your space bar, then we're gonna get that step mode. To me, what, what's easiest is the record mode. And the difference is record mode is going to record over everything that you've recorded before. And the dub mode is going to add on or layer on additional sound. So if you recorded a, a low frequency volume through the entire piece here, and then I want to add some dripping water or something to this effect, then I can just dub those little effects on top of it. If I want to go ahead and record this lower pitch sound here, I want to hit R here. Okay, I want to get this back to the start here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this record here. And then as I approach the spot I wanna add it, I can go ahead and start adding it in. Sound samples can also be layered on the Foley sampler. We can overlap the samples by setting it up this way. We're gonna get multiple sound output from just one key press. Now it's time for finishing touches. We can add additional effects such as the Fairlight effects, build in delay, echo, reverb, and more. Or you can add in your own VST plugin effects right into the audio track. When Blackmagic released a Foley sound sampler, they promised 500 free Foley sounds. We're still waiting on those at this point. When those are released, I'll give you instructions in the description of this video on how to get those added to your sampler. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. I'll be putting up some more videos soon, so please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you real soon.